Welcome to Homework Answers. We're going through the textbook Programming Logic and Design, 8th edition by Joyce Farrell. And in this video, we're covering Chapter 2, Exercise 10. Um, as always, make sure you correct the changes that I've made, usually just numbers and names. So if you have the book, it's very easy. Uh, with this problem, we are trying to figure out the price of a house. So we're going to be asking things like what's your lot number, um, how many bedrooms and bathrooms it's going to have, and how many like a, how many port garage it's going to have, like some have one or two or three, and each one of those has a specific price that's to be attached to it. So with those we'll have, a, you know, they'll be declared as constants. So looking at the hierarchy chart here, and this is a guide, remember that, you know, a hierarchy chart you're going to have to most likely draw it out, um, but this should help as a, a guideline for you. Um, not necessarily the best hierarchy chart. You might find that there are better things to insert in here. And if you find a better way, by all means, do it your way. Uh, but let's start with main program here. And then we've got housekeeping, get lot number. And what's going to happen when we ask for the lot number is we're going to check a sentinel value. And that goes inside the detail loop. Because we have a loop, we want to keep checking for different houses, different properties. So as long as we don't enter the sentinel value for the lot number, then we're going to do whatever it has contained inside of the loop here. Um, so we're going to get the number of bedrooms. We're going to get the number of bathrooms, get the number of car garage we have. Um, then we're going to calculate the cost, display the, co the cost, and afterwards we're going to get the lot number again, and this is inside of the loop still. And we're going to check to see if that lot number, if we've entered the sentinel value for that. If we haven't, we'll check for a new house model. You know, maybe this new house has, this different house that we're going to check for might have more bedrooms or less bedrooms or more cars that it can fit in the garage. But if you do enter that value, which up here you can see is a negative one, we're going to go, uh, we're going to exit the loop and we're going to have end of job here and display a message. So that's basically the hierarchy chart there that I've got written out. And let's look at what it, what it looks like if you code out the program here. So we've got all these uh, variables here and notice how these, like the base price, we do have a base price for the house. It's not going to, like the house is not going to be less than 60000 you're, you have to spend at least 60000 and that's, you know, uh, that's a constant. That number is always going to be 60000 So that's why I have it listed here as a constant. The next one, bedrooms. Bedrooms are always 18000 for a bedroom. So that's a constant as well. Bathrooms, same thing, 14000 um, One car, like if you have a one-car garage, that's going to be 5000 Two car garage will be twice that amount, and so on. So all of those have a definite price attached to them, so they're all constants. Uh, the next, the next set of uh, variables we have here are the number of bedrooms, because we need to know how many bedrooms a house is going to have. Same with bathrooms. Same with how many cars we're going to be able to fit in the garage, and we have a variable for total price of the house. We also need to have a variable for the lot number because that's what we're going to check to see if we're going to end the program or not. So I just have that as integer. You know, it's not going to be lot number 5.5. That's, you know, it's always going to be a whole number. So we don't need to do decimal places. That's why it's not double. And it's not going to be used in a calculation with any variables that are double. So in our inputs, we're going to first ask what the lot number is, then we're going to check to make sure the lot number is not equal to negative one. So while it's not equal to that, do all that's inside of here. And so inside of this loop, we've got how many bedrooms, we'll enter that. How many bathrooms, we enter that as well. And then how many um, ports will your garage be? So we'll enter that. And then we've got a calculation for our total price, and that's base price, because it can't go under 60000 Nobody's going to build you a house for less than that. 
plus, and then in parentheses, number of bedrooms times the cost per bedroom. So that's basically the cost per bedroom right there. Well, that, you know, that is the cost per bedroom. And so we'll, we'll multiply that, and then we have plus, and then in parentheses, number of bathrooms times, you know, the cost for one bathroom plus number, or in parentheses, number of car garage we want, or number, you know, yeah, number of cars that will fit in the garage. So how many ports, basically, and then times what the cost is for one. So that, that's just very simple math right there. Um, it's okay if it's, you know, if you don't quite understand that, um, just go with it. The math is right. It works. <laughs> so we'll um, move on to outputting the messages. So the total cost for your house is, and then I've got set precision to two and fixed, so we get two decimal places. And of course, I've got this include IOMA and IP in the header, so that works. So these two things work. And then we output the total price variable here. So whatever is contained, whatever number comes out in this calculation here, is contained in this variable, total price. So that number will be displayed here. And then we again ask for your lot number and a place to enter it, and then it'll check again. And if it's a negative one, we output thank you for choosing us. And the book may have something different that it wants you to put here. But you can see it kind of matches up. Everything is laid out in the same fashion as the hierarchy chart. So I'm going to go ahead and run the program. And we'll go ahead and check lot number five. How many bedrooms? Two. Uh, bathrooms, one. One port for the car. Total cost is $115,000. Lot number, uh, let's do that again. Let's do 10. Uh, four bedrooms, two baths, and maybe a three car. $175,000. And now I'm going to enter the Sentinel value, negative one. And we can see the message here, program ends. And so that's basically it for this problem. Kind of a simple one for chapter two. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.